So the Higgs boson, people at first might think that this is very esoteric and may not have much to do with their daily lives, but actually it, it's slightly subtle. Uh, this really is an important thing for everyone. So 500 years ago, Isaac Newton noticed that when an apple falls to the earth, he thought about what that meant, and he was able to describe the motion of the planets. And in the same way that he could describe the motion of that apple to the earth, that gravity was the force that was responsible for all this acting. So for 500 years, if you would have taken a physics course, we would have taught you how gravity acts. But without understanding where mass came from, we could not tell you why gravity acts. Mm -hmm. And so one of the people who's in the audience today, Peter Higgs, together with several others, uh, came up with a theory to describe why there should be an interaction based upon the mass of a particle. And that interaction relies on a, on a symmetry of nature being broken. And part of that symmetry being broken manifests itself in the existence of a new particle, the Higgs boson. The Higgs boson is named after Peter Higgs, obviously. And so what we find here is that in the same way that at first people think, well, relativity doesn't affect my everyday life. When Einstein came up with relativity in 1905, people thought, this was crazy, you can't go fast and speed light, what does that mean? But then we find out that actually my cell phone uses uh, special and general relativity both in order to tell me where I am. When I pull up Google Maps and I ask where I'm located, I'm using a relativistic correction due to the Earth's mass which bends time and space. In the same way, we're going to be finding new technologies which depend upon our understanding of gravity and mass.